Good morning and a warm welcome from St Mary Abbots in Kensington. We're very glad to have you joining us for this service of Holy Communion according to the Book of Common Prayer for the first Sunday in Lent. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts be open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. God spake these words and said, I am the Lord thy God, thou shalt have none other gods but me. Lord, have mercy upon us and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt not make to thyself any graven image, nor the likeness of anything that is in heaven above or in the earth beneath or in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down to them, nor worship them, for I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, and visit the sins of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and show mercy unto thousands in them that love me 
and keep my commandments. Lord, have mercy upon us and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Lord, have mercy upon us and incline our hearts to keep this law. Remember that thou keep holy the Sabbath day. Six days shalt thou labour and do all that thou hast to do. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt do no manner of work, thou and thy son and thy daughter, thy manservant and thy maidservant, thy cattle and the stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that in the mid is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the seventh day and hallowed it. Lord, have mercy upon us and incline our hearts to keep this law. Honour thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long in the land which the Lord thy God hath given thee. Lord, have mercy upon us and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt do no murder. Lord, have mercy upon us and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Lord, have mercy upon us and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt not steal. Lord, have mercy upon us and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbour. Lord, have mercy upon us and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbour's house. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbour's wife, nor his servant, nor his maid, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is his. Lord, have mercy upon us and write all these thy laws in our hearts, we beseech thee. Let us pray. O Lord, who for our sake didst fast forty days and forty nights, 
give us grace to use such abstinence, that our flesh being subdued to the Spirit, we may ever obey thy godly motions in righteousness and true holiness, to thy honour and glory, who livest and reignest with the Father and the Holy Ghost, one God, world without end. Amen. And the Collect for Lent. Almighty and everlasting God, who hatest nothing that thou hast made, and dost forgive the sins of all them that are penitent, create and make in us new and contrite hearts, that we, worthily lamenting our sins and acknowledging our wretchedness, may obtain of thee the God of all mercy, perfect remission and forgiveness, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from Paul's second epistle to the Corinthians, chapter 6, beginning at the first verse. We then, as workers together with him, beseech you also that ye receive not the grace of God in vain. For he saith, I have heard thee in a time accepted, and in the day of salvation have I succoured thee. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. Giving no offence in anything that the ministry be not blamed but in all things approving ourselves as the ministers of God in much patience, in afflictions, in necessities, in distresses, in stripes, in imprisonments, in tumults, in labours, in watchings, in fastings, by pureness, by knowledge, by long-suffering, by kindness, by the Holy Ghost, by love unfeigned, by the word of truth, by the power of God, by the armour of righteousness on the right hand and on the left, by honour and dishonour, by evil report and good report, as deceivers and yet true, as unknown and yet well known, as dying and behold we live, as chastened and not killed, as sorrowful, yet always rejoicing, as poor, yet making many th rich, as having nothing, and yet possessing all things. This is the word of the Lord.
hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Then was Jesus led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And when he had fasted forty days and forty nights, he was afterward and hungered. And when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God, command that these stones be made bread. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Then the devil taketh him up into the holy city, and setteth him on a pinnacle of the temple, and said to him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down, for it is written, He shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against a stone. Jesus said unto him, It is written again, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Again the devil taketh him up into an exceeding high mountain, and showeth him all the kingdoms of the world, and the glory of them, and saith unto him, All these things will I give thee, if thou wilt fall down and worship me. Then saith Jesus unto him, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Then the devil leaveth him, and behold, angels came and ministered unto him. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of the Father. And he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord and giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets. And I believe one Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. May I speak in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Most of us will recognise the quotation from the character Lord Darlington in Oscar Wilde's famous play, Lady Windermere's Fan, as he declared, I can resist anything but temptation. The 40 days of Lent have become increasingly associated with personal attempts to challenge this statement, to resist the temptations presented by things we've attempted to give up. At the wonderful online pancake party organised by Martina for 20 families on Tuesday of this week, we remembered that in former times, and still today in the Eastern Orthodox churches, people would give up almost everything in Lent, except for bread and vegetables. We reflected with the children about how this would feel and we talked about what we would find it hardest to give up. Unsurprisingly, chocolate featured high on the list, though some families were indeed planning to give up meat for this year 
and we wondered how hard that would be. I personally find giving up chocolate is indeed quite a test of my own restraint, but is self-restraint really the principal reason for Lenten abstinence? The Bible, and especially the story of Jesus' temptation in the wilderness, provides some helpful insight into what the more serious temptations which face us really are, how our Lenten discipline, whatever form this takes, could relate to them, and how we might model our responses to testing on those of Christ himself. We might first remember the very familiar Old Testament story of Eve's temptation by the serpent. The story of Adam and Eve's fall demonstrates the stark human contrast to the reactions of Christ himself to his temptations in the wilderness. Adam and Eve succumbed not just to the delicious but forbidden fruit on offer, but to the cunning serpent's explanation of what consuming this fruit might mean, the knowledge of good and evil, which would bring them power equivalent to that of God himself. It was a test of their obedience, but it was also a prototype for the kind of temptation or sin which besets the whole of the human race, a desire for power and control over others. We might feel that although we see many examples of autocratic and power-hungry behaviour in the world around us, we don't easily discern such tendencies in ourselves. But medieval theologians believed that all the sins of humankind stemmed from the sin of pride, of believing that in some way we are better than others, or that we have got things right, or that we are for some reason entitled to things, even if this results in the deprivation of others whom we may never see. The temptations with which the devil taunts Jesus during his 40 days in the wilderness are similarly all based around issues of power and pride. The first of these, the suggestion that he should turn stones into bread, might seem quite a straightforward idea. After all, wandering alone in the isolation and heat of the wilderness, the idea of creating some bread for oneself might quite appeal. Yet there's a more significant test implied by Satan's words, if thou be the son of God. Each of his first two suggestions begins with these words, daring Jesus to do something dramatic to prove that he really is God's son as he claims and to test God's love simply to defend his own pride. I wonder if it's fair to say that almost all of us can find ourselves getting wound up by people who cast doubt on things we say or on beliefs which matter to us. We may all react to this in different ways, angrily, passive aggressively or silently, but it's very hard to do what Jesus does and simply to remember that what matters is what God thinks and that we're not called to prove our own significance or rightness to others. The devil, increasingly frustrated with his failure, then tries to bribe Jesus to worship him, appealing to that subtle desire for power which we've thought about by offering him power over all the kingdoms of the world. But Christ is able to remind him that we are told only to worship God, with the implication, too, that while there may be benefits in selling our soul to the devil here on earth, for those who serve God, there is the promise of eternal glory. Lent, then, is a time as much of testing as of tempting. <clears throat> Even in secular society, people have often embraced these weeks as an opportunity for minimalism, for detoxing and decluttering, concepts which have become hugely popular in an age of excessive choice and plenty. <clears throat> but such activities only become uniquely Christian if they involve some searching questions about ourselves and our own beliefs. Christians can use Lent to examine the depth of their faith and to face up to the challenges of pride and the desire for power 
in which resisting the physical temptations of bread or forbidden fruit or even chocolate play only a minor role. The desert or wilderness has often been experienced by travellers as a place of truth or reorientation that strips the human spirit bare of pretense and illusion. As we try, even in small ways, to recreate this sense of stripping back during Lent, we can discern its real purpose in laying aside our own pride and our yearning to prove our virtue or our success to others and in finding extra time and space for prayer, reflection or Bible study to listen for God's voice as he reveals himself to us. Perhaps one useful aspect in the idea of giving material things up for Lent is that it provides opportunities to talk about faith with others, to demonstrate that Christian practice is not limited to Sunday worship, but affects the way we live. The story of Jesus' temptation in the wilderness reminds us to keep the words of scripture and the teachings of our faith in our minds, on our hearts and on our lips, as Jesus did, revealing that in every test, small or great, which faces us, there is the opportunity to glorify God and to witness to his importance in our lives. Amen.
Let us pray for the whole state of Christ's church, militant here in earth. Almighty and ever-living God, who by thy holy apostle hast taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all men, we humbly beseech thee most mercifully to accept our alms and oblations and to receive these our prayers, which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity and concord. And grant that all they that do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. We beseech thee also to save and defend all Christian kings, princes and governors, and specially thy servant Elizabeth, our Queen, that under her we may be godly and quietly governed. And grant unto her whole counsel, and to all that are put in authority under her, that they may truly and indifferently minister justice to the punishment of wickedness and vice, and to the maintenance of thy true religion and virtue. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops and curates, that they may both by their life and doctrine set forth thy true and lively word, and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. And to all thy people give thy heavenly grace, and specially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succour all them who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. And we also bless thy holy name for all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear, beseeching thee to give us grace, so to follow their good examples, that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant this, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Ye that do truly and earnestly repent you of your sins, and are in love and charity with your neighbours, and intend to lead a new life, following the commandments of God, and walking from henceforth in his holy ways, draw near with faith, and take this holy sacrament to your comfort, and make your humble confession to Almighty God, meekly kneeling upon your knees. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, Maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word and deed against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings, the remembrance of them is grievous unto us. The burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. For thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life, to the honour and glory of thy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all them that with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and bring you to everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what comfortable words our Saviour Christ saith unto all that truly turn to him. Come unto me, all that travail and are heavy laden, 
and I will refresh you. So God loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son to the end that all that believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Hear also what St Paul saith, This is a true saying and worthy of all men to be received that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Hear also what St John saith, If any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins. The Lord be with you, and with thy spirit. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God, it is meet and right so to do. It is very meet, right and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty, everlasting God. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we, Lord, and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and singing. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption. 
who made there by his one oblation of himself once offered, a full, perfect and sufficient sacrifice, oblation and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world. And did institute, and in his holy gospel command us to continue, a perpetual memory of that his precious death until his coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father, we most humbly beseech thee, and grant that we, receiving these thy creatures of bread and wine, according to thy Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. Who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread, and when he had given thanks, he brake it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Quise after supper he took the cup, and when he had given the thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it, in remembrance of me. Amen. the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was given for you. Preserve your bodies and souls unto everlasting life. Oh, 
as our Saviour Christ hath commanded and taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. O Lord and Heavenly Father, we, thy humble servants, entirely desire thy fatherly goodness, mercifully to accept this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy and lively sacrifice unto thee, humbly beseeching thee that all we who are partakers of this holy communion may be fulfilled with thy grace and heavenly benediction. And although we be unworthy through our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, yet we beseech thee to accept this our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offences, through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honour and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. The peace of God, which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Ghost be amongst you and remain with you this day and always. Amen. Thank you.